Welcome back to Anton Math. And in the second video of, of Unit 3, uh, we're going to be talking about some of the transformations of these graphs of sine and cosine. Now the first type of tra transformation I'd like to talk to, to you about is the vertical shift. And I have some base graphs here. Let's go ahead and we're just going to use sine for this first one. When we talk about a vertical shift, now you can see I've transitioned back to y and x. We're going to be using y and x from here on out. And uh, a typical um, a typical equation that we'll be graphing will have a y on the left side like this equals uh, some function of x. We've done the basic one in the last video, but now I want to talk about uh, getting a little bit more complicated. So when I say vertical shift, what I mean is if we have some equation like y equals let's say 2 plus sine x. All right, so we're adding some constant value um, that, but it's separate from the actual trigonometric function, right? I'm adding two to the entire thing. Now, this should this acts. Um, this acts in the way that you would uh, expect it to, right? I'm just going to be moving everything on my graph up by two. So here, when x equals zero, my sine equals zero. But if I'm adding 2 to that, that means that my graph is going to equal 2, isn't it? My y value here of my new equation is going to be 2. Here at pi over 2, my sine capped up at 1, so now it's going to be capping up at 3. At pi, I was back at 0, so I'm going to be at 2. At 3 pi over 2, my sine was negative 1, so pl 2 plus negative 1 is just going to be positive 1. And at 2 pi, my sine is 0, so 2 plus 0 is 2. All right, so my shifted sine graph, 2 plus sine of x, is going to look a little bit something like this, isn't it? All right, so nothing too bad. We're, just remember, whenever we're adding some value outside or you know separately from the function, we're just moving my y coordinate up or down by that total value, aren't we? So nothing too surprising here. Now the second type of transformation I want to talk about, and we'll use cosine for this one is just going to be flipping the graph. And what I mean by flipping the graph is if we have something like y equals negative cosine x, right? well let's figure out what that's going to be. If here when x equals 0 cosine is equal to positive 1, that means that negative cosine is going to be negative 1. At these two points, negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, I'm at 0. So negative 0 is still 0. So my graph is going to pass through these points still. And at both negative pi and pi, my cosine is equal to negative 1. So negative cosine then is going to be equal to positive 1. All right, so let's go ahead and fill this in. And this is why I called it flipping the graph, right? Negative cosine here. Oop, that's not very good, is it? we can do better than that. Negative cosine here is just going to be flipping this cosine graph right over its kind of central axis. Now here I haven't ha I don't have a vertical shift so I'm just going to be flipping it over the x-axis. Okay now coming back to this sign um, I want to come back to this sign and talk about flipping this sign now for a second. Let's say I had this sine graph that we just did. But instead of 2 plus sine x, I have 2 minus sine x, right? We're kind of combining the two things we just talked about. Oh. So what this means is now I have a negative sine function that I'm going to be adding 2 to. All right. Now, instead of kind of, you can think of it two different ways. You can think of it as, I'm going to flip this sine function over the x-axis and then add 2. Or you can think, well, I'm adding 2 to sine and then I'm flipping it over its new kind of central horizontal axis. And what I mean by that is there's still this kind of central axis here at y equals 2, isn't there? You can see this kind of intersects this sine the same way that uh, sine is intersected by the x-axis in its original position. All right, so let's use a different color here. So let's, I'm actually going to use red here. This is my y equals 2 minus sine x, not to be confused with y equals 2 plus sine x. 
So I'm just flipping it over this axis right here, aren't I? And we're still going to be the same distance from this little horizontal central axis of sine as I was on the other side of it, but it's a negative value. Or thinking of this algebraically, um, we could have just plotted this out point by point, right? That's We can always do that as well. If y equals 2 minus sine x, well, I know that at x equals 0, sine is 0, so I just get 2. At x equals pi over 2, um, now sine is 1, so negative sine is negative 1, so that's going to be a total of 2 minus 1 or 1, etc., etc., okay? It's kind of uh, keep your mind open. There's different ways of thinking of this, and, and different ways of thinking of it works for different people. All right, now the last one I wanted to talk about is um, stretching these functions. Now let's see, let's work. Let's just keep working with sine. We're already here. Now let's say that I had something like y equals 2 sine x. Okay. Now I'm just going to be multiplying all my values of sine by 2, aren't I? So at x equals 0, I still have y equals 0. At x equals pi over 2, my sine is equal to 1, so 2 times sine is going to be equal to 2. 2 times 0 is 0, so I'm still at 0 at pi. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, so that's where I am at 3 pi over 2, and at 2 pi I'm still at 0, aren't I? So this is my y equals 2 sine x. Oops. Alright, now it doesn't need to be a whole number. I could have a fraction. Right? Let's say I had something like y equals 1 half sine x. Now that just means I'm back here at my purple, my original, right? If sine is equal to 1 at pi over 2, that means that 1 half of sine is just equal to 1 half, isn't it? Everywhere that sine is equal to 0, 1 half of sine is still equal to 0. And over here at 3 pi over 2, uh, sine was equal to negative 1, so 1 half of that is negative 1 half. All right, so I've kind of compressed this graph down now. Now notice I'm still I still haven't pushed in how far that I go. My period has not changed. Right? We're going to talk about changing the period in the next video. So whenever I have a coefficient out in front of sine or cosine, I'm changing how tall or how short the graph is, but not how wide the graph is. Okay, very important to keep that in mind. All right, now in the next video, we're going to go a little bit more into detail about these coefficients out here. These are called our amplitude of the function. And we're going to talk about uh, um, changing the period and what that looks like in the actual equation.